Hello friends, my name is Sarah. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, yeah, so let's say buckle in. Uh, what's the other cliche they say? Grab a cup of something. I have a lot to show you today. <laughs> like a lot, a lot. So let's get into it. The first things I have to show you are old finished projects that I have ripped out certain elements of and have redone them. The first one is my denim sweater. This yarn is Wool and the Gang's recycled denim yarn. I think it's called Billie Jean. I don't remember which color this one was. It's the mid-tone denim. There's like a light one and a dark one and then this one. So I made a crocheted sweater years ago out of this and I didn't like it and it, I like never wore it. So I ripped it out and I made this. I had the neckline was just like kind of like this and it wasn't anything I was particularly excited about, didn't enjoy it. So I picked up and I just knit like straight up and it had like a rolled collar. Thought I'd like it. I didn't like it. Didn't like it at all. So I had contemplated literally cutting into my knitting and creating a V, like sewing an edge, sewing a V, cutting into it, and then uh, like crocheting an edge or doing an eye cord or something like that. But then was like, I have this long straight stockinette section. So I rolled it over and created a rolled egg collar and it looks fabulous. I've already worn it several times. Uh, the other thing that I've not done yet that I plan on doing is making the sleeves longer. The sleeves are just like a hair too short. So I plan on ripping out this crocheted little edge and then knitting a little bit longer like to here, like to here and then re-crocheting the edge. I could crochet more onto the end and I had considered it. However, the crochet is a little bit thicker and I don't think I want this much sleeve and crochet. So I'm gonna rip back, knit a little, knit a little more length and call it good. So yeah, my denim sweater is just a drop shoulder, no pattern, long back hem. It's fabulous and I've already worn it a lot. Uh, and once I knit the sleeves longer, I'm gonna love it that much more. All right, because I have no problem with ripping out my knitting and fixing issues with things, I've ripped out sleeves on another sweater. The next one I have is my fuzzy raglan sweater, which is knit out of loops and threads, cozy wool tweed, something like that. There's more info on previous episodes when I actually finished this earlier in the year, but uh, the sleeves aren't long enough. I wore it maybe once or twice throughout the rest of winter and I love this color and it's fuzzy and soft and I definitely would wear this. I just, it, I have to have long, long sleeves, like not bracelet or like it has to be like hit me here, has to, otherwise I probably won't wear it. So I ripped it out. And then I knit from here on, I knit that much more length. And then let me show you the other sleeve because I haven't done the other sleeve yet. This one has kind of a cinched in wristband and I kind of wanted a wider one. So I decreased fewer stitches. I only decreased I think one or two to get to the amount I needed to do a two by two rib. So yeah, and I like this much better. So I will get around to doing the other sleeve at some point, uh, as well as the denim sweater. But for now, again, I'm not in a hurry. I just want to have it done before fall and it will get done before fall. I don't mind ripping out my knitting and redoing it. It doesn't really bother me at all. It's just a matter of getting around to actually doing it. All right, now, Let's get into all the things I have been working on. Uh, let's see, what should we start with? Let's start with this sweater, which is living in my Songbird handmade bag. 
and you know it if you've been around here for a while you know the bag uh it's beautiful in here is my cotton sweater uh, so this is made out of drops saffron it is a hundred percent cotton yarn i have finished the first sleeve Ta -da! and have started the second sleeve Ta -da! i really want to get this one done I don't mind projects taking a long time. Like I don't need projects to be like super quick. I mean, some things I would prefer were quicker, like a project I will show you in a minute. But uh, something like this, a fingering weight cotton sweater, I don't mind that it takes me a while, but I'm kind of just done knitting it. I don't want to knit it anymore. <laughs> I want to knit something new and fresh and shiny, but I don't like to have too many garments going at once because otherwise I feel like I ignore them and then they never get done. And I know I would wear this in the remaining bit of summer. I'll also wear it through fall and winter. I like cotton. So yeah, but I also have decided I'm going to rip out the hem. I did an I cord and I don't like it at all. It doesn't fit this sweater and it keeps rolling and doing weird things. It just doesn't look very polished and nice. So I'm gonna do what I did on the sleeve and do a just a short one by one twisted because I feel like the twisted looks nice with the cotton because cotton can be kind of a pain to knit with. It can, it's, you have to be very even with your tension. So if you're not even with your tension, you get a lot of weird loops and bumps and stuff. So yeah, there's some areas in this sweater where kind of, I'm hoping a blocking will help it out, especially in the freaking sleeve. Can you see it? See the line where my stitches were on hold? Ugh. It always seems to happen with all sweaters, but the cotton, it's... Looking, looking a little bit extra, uh, but yeah, cotton sweater. We'll say more when it's done. Hopefully it'll be done sooner rather than later. That, which has no pattern, by the way, just so you know. Okay, so the next garment that I have been working on is my V-neck raglan that also has no pattern. I am knitting this out of Lion Band, Lion Band, oh my gosh, words, Lion Brands, True Boo, which is 100% bamboo. Look at this drape, guys. It's so drapey and lovely. We will see how this wears, though, because it is super soft and super drapey and very, like, you think cotton is very particular about tension? <laughs> the bamboo is that much more. Oh my goodness. Ooh, it's been a bit of a struggle. There's a few areas. Of this area look at how messy that is that's where i've joined a new ball of yarn and i haven't woven in the ends but i need to i need to because the ah, it's stressing me out <laughs> so i'm gonna weave in the ends i'm gonna tie the end because uh inga from knitting traditions talks about how she does that with like cotton projects she weaves in like a ridiculously long tail and then she ties a tail well not i think i'm gonna do that here with this uh but i'm gonna have to even all of those little stitches out i'm really hoping that this will be enough to get me done with the body though i highly doubt it because i really don't want to join another ball and have to do that again somewhere on the body i was very particular like once i was getting near the end of the first ball i purposely it was going to run out like in the middle of the front of the body and i was like yeah i don't really want that there so i purposely stopped early under the arm so yeah i'll make sure i do that again but yeah so far i'm liking it i am going to pick out and redo the i cord on the neckline it's a little too tight i tried it on before i did the neckline and it was 
deep, a very deep V. And I was like, okay, that's not gonna work. Um, so I purposely picked up, a, oops, sorry. I picked up a lot less stitches going around um, than you would normally. So I just, I picked up a few too few. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna undo that. I don't mind undoing it because I know I'll like it better because right now it's like right here, which is not the most flattering V. It either needs to be a V or, you know, a crew for me or a turtleneck. I don't like this in between V thing. So yeah, I need to fix that. But otherwise, yeah, I'll talk about it more when I get around to, you know, finish finishing it. I'm hoping I can finish this soon, like in the next week week would be great uh, because I'd like to wear this to flock fiber festival which I am bending at more on that later uh, next project I will not dwell on for too long it is my socks my two at a time socks oh, that's annoying two at a time socks I have knit there to there since last time I showed I am about maybe an inch from starting the heels. So yeah, this is Oakham Fiber Company yarn. Yeah, I don't have anything to say about them. I'll, I've talked about them enough. All right, because I don't have enough going on at the moment, I cast on a dish towel. Uh, yeah, you can't really see it super well because it's bright white, but yeah, here we are. This is actually the wrong side. Here's the right side. <laughs> Not that it really matters. Uh, it is knit at a very loose gauge, as I'm sure you can tell, sort of, because again, it's bright freaking white. Um, just, um, I give up on trying. But it's really loose gauge because this particular cotton, which I'm not sure if it's like sugar and cream or peaches and cream or one of those like cottons that's really good for dishcloths, uh, it shrinks and it tightens up a lot when it is washed. So I purposely have knit this at a looser gauge so that way it tightens into it and it's not like super dense because I don't like it when the dishcloths are super dense. And this isn't a dishcloth though, it's a dish towel. And my intention for this is for when I'm canning, I have something I can lay across the counter uh, to set my drawers on and such. So yeah, there's that. I don't know what to say about it. Not falling apart. I just cast on uh, X amount of stitches and went for it. And you know, I couldn't help it. Uh, but I did cast on another thing. I wasn't feeling the socks, guys. I needed something small to work on. And the dish towel, for some reason, doesn't speak to me as traveling knitting. And I think because the needles are really loud, they kind of clack, 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 clack really loudly. And I kind of like to knit kind of silently and subtly and people are like oh you're knitting uh when it goes clack 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 you can kind of tell somebody's knitting so uh that not the best travel knitting so and i'm not feeling the socks i don't want i don't want to know the socks <laughs> so i cast on a hat Ta -da! this is for my daughter it does stretch way more uh, you know, because it's two by two rib. This is the Watch Cap by Pearl Soho. It is a free pattern, and I am knitting this out of Bella Filato Studio yarn. This is a discontinued rainbow tweed yarn that she dyed black. It is super fabulous. I <clears throat> was a bad person. Ordered this uh and didn't really read the description you know i thought it was like a tweed like you know a normal tweed with like white and brown and beige and gray nips not rainbow nips rainbow nips aren't really my thing so when i got it i was kind of like oh shoot now what and i showed it to my daughter and she really likes it because she's girly but has decided she doesn't like pink and purple anymore because you know she's turning nine and it's cool and her new favorite color is black so i was like do you like this and she was like i love this so i am making her a hat on here are a couple of stitch markers 
which may become part of a collection. That's my little astronaut part of a collection, you know, at some point in time. We will see. Uh, but yeah, I cast on for the smallest size, which is the size I knit myself a hat out of. It's a DK weight yarn, and I'm using three millimeter needles. These are the Chow Gu, I think the 16 inch, maybe ones. Uh, so yeah, it will fit her head nicely. I do think next time I will cast for myself, I will cast on the next, the second size. I think this is like the perfect, like teen, large kid, small adult, but I feel like in my hat, I want a little bit more room, but I think this will be perfect and it would fit me because I have a small head, but I'm not making it for me. I am making it for her and I think it'll fit her perfectly. So yeah, watch cat by Pearl Soho, cast it on, and I've made some good progress on it already. Let's talk finished things, shall we? Let us first talk about boring finished things. Uh, because I was just, I had cast on itis, guys. The cast on itis was very real. Uh, I cast on a sponge, and in an evening, like in maybe, 45 minutes an hour. I cast on and finished this lovely little sponge. This is more, these are scraps of my wool and the gang, Billy Jean. And then this is a random, I don't remember the brand. I think it might be Red Heart. That scrubby yarn that is the worst to knit with. I literally hate its guts uh, because it really scratches the finger. <laughs> it is not comfortable to knit with but it makes for a really good sponge. So you suffer through. Then I knit a pot holder. This is the Sunburst Pot Holder by Pearl Soho, another free pattern. I kind of, I haven't blocked it. So it's kind of doing a weird bubbly thing, but you know, it's fine. I used again that wool in the gang Billie Jean, I'm using up scraps guys anywhere I can. And then just some white cotton, which I'm knitting that uh, towel out of. So yeah, there's that. It's really annoying. I really need to block this. <laughs> it doesn't really matter because things are just getting set on top of it. I'm not sure I would trust it to grab something scalding hot out of the oven, but setting things onto the counter, yes. I'm just a little bit chicken to try grabbing something. <laughs> Maybe if it was hot bordering on warm, I would. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> All right, last finished thing is da 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 da. This is my Remy camisole by Kadri. It is done. It is also black, so you can't really see a whole lot. But it is an all over two by two rib tank top or camisole. It is knit out of Coast, or Holst Garden's Coast, which is a 50% wool, 50% cotton blend. I modified it slightly by eliminating the one by one rib at the bottom and just continuing the two by two all the way down. And I also lengthened it a touch. It is fabulous. I really like it. I do find this yarn not rough but not super soft. It's not quite as smooth as a previous project I've used Coast for. I used Coast for a cardigan. I test knit for the Crea Bea, Rebecca Clow. I don't remember what that pattern is called. I'm so bad at names, guys. But I feel like that one softened up more. So I wanna block it again. I also need to look into seeing if this can go through the washer, the dryer or not. I don't know. I brought my other Rem Remy over here to show you. This is my previously knit one. This one has the one by one rib at the bottom and I didn't want it at the bottom because I feel like it flares with the one by one at the end. And I like that this one does not do that flaring at the bottom. But this one is knit out of 100% acrylic and it's much, much softer, but it is 
hella hot. It is so uncomfortable to wear on a hot day. I will only wear this on a day that's cooler and I can layer it with other things. <laughs> so yeah, there's the original Remy and then my newly finished one, which I love. I've worn it once so far. I will wear it more though. Okay, and then I can't help myself. I started planning for my next project, <laughs> my next garment project, because I am seeing the light at the end of the tunnel with the other two, with the t-shirt and the cotton sweater. So I have this yarn, the Mary Fine by We Are Knitters. This was gifted yarn from We Are Knitters. I was gifted this yarn as like a kit. I picked out a colorwork sweater and then only received this color. You can't knit a colorwork sweater without two colors. So I sent them an email and was like, hey, I only got one color. And they're like, okay. And then that's the last I heard. I never got the other yarn. So um, I was like, okay, well, what the heck? I can't knit this pattern for you unless I have the other color. So I never knit that one. And I've got this yarn just kind of sitting here. So I was like, well, I don't want it to go to waste and just sit here. So here we are. I'm going to knit something else with it. But this yarn is 100% merino wool. I have to find out if it's super wash or not. I want to say it is, but I... Don't know, I have to look it up. And just so you know, just because this yarn is gifted does not mean I won't give you my full and honest opinion. Thus far, just touching it and swatching with it, show you the swatch in a second. It's not the softest thing. I wouldn't think, I wouldn't touch this and think merino. Uh, I've even touched some non superwash merinos that are much softer than this. It's not dreamy in any way. It's not scratchy. Uh, I think. Lion brand Woolies, honestly, that's kind of where it's at. So, I mean, without the plastic feel, but like as far as softness goes, it feels like a regular yarn, not like, I mean, there's softer yarns in Merino, but it doesn't feel like Merino to me. Uh, but yeah, there's that. I'm going to make a cardigan with it. I have been wanting a white cardigan in my wardrobe. I only have two cardigans at the moment. I have a light gray one and a dark gray one. And they are both the champagne cardigan. And I plan to make a third champagne cardigan. But, but, don't run away yet. Don't run away. We're gonna do all sorts of modifications. It will not be the same sweater at all. And I have to say, I'm very excited about it. Oh, what am I gonna do to this cardigan? Well, it will not be stockinette. No, it will not. I have a stitch picked out. So I picked this one, the double basket weave. Yeah. Uh, and you wanna know the great part about this is? Uh, there'll be a lot less purling because it is a garter pattern. Yay! I am very, 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 very happy with this idea because I don't mind purling. Purling does not bother me, but it hurts. It hurts my hands, so I guess it kind of does bother me. But here is my little swatch. Because yes, I don't do giant swatches. I do little swatches basically to test stitch pattern. So here is my swatch. Look at this fabulous texture. I mean, I know it's a teeny tiny swatch, so you probably really can't get a good idea of how it will look, but it's gonna look good. And then I added ribbing to see how the ribbing will look, but I think I might do a twisted rib. We'll see when I get there. And then I also wanted to see how it would look with the double knit band, button band. Uh, yeah, it looks real sharp. I'm very excited about this. Uh, <laughs> I cannot wait to finish that cotton sweater because I really want to cast this on. I will have to do some mathing because it has to be, I think, a multiple of eight or something. So I'm going to have to look at the math for the champagne cardigan and figure out if certain areas of it are divisible by eight and what's going on and also figure out the raglan. But... I'm not too worried about it. It doesn't need to be perfect. And I feel like it being this nice garter will hide a lot of little errors and mistakes and stuff. And yeah, 
I don't know, I like the idea of a nice white textured cardigan without being too fussy. Like I really love the idea of an all over cabled cardigan, but I don't quite have enough yarn for that and I don't want to order more. This is free yarn, so yeah, I want to use the free yarn and I have to order more yarn. Wanted to get used, not wasted, but I don't want to add anything to it. So there will be enough to make a regular cardigan. I may lengthen it too. I may lengthen it and I may add pockets. So it won't really be a champagne cardigan in any way. I'm just using the base math is all I'm doing. Okay, so that is basically it for the knitting. I don't have any more stuff. I have not received or purchased any new yarn because I have yarn right now and I don't need any more yarn. I'm knitting with what I've got. So there's that. But I do have a yarny-ish thing to show you that I made. And this will kind of segue us into the art section, but I have a new bag that I've painted. I will have these cute little, oh, hold on. I will have these, these cute little zipper bags. I can't, oh, can't see what I'm doing here. These cotton canvas zipper bags available at Flock Fiber Festival first weekend in August in Seattle, Washington, if you are in the Pacific Northwest, I would love to see you. Or if you're willing to travel across country, well, that would be cool to see you too. Uh, but yeah, first weekend in August, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I will be there with lots of goodies, tons of stitch markers, uh, tons of buttons, bags that will be painted and stamped and hand sewn and ones that just have stuff that were already like bag was assembled and then I painted it and made it look cool. Uh, yeah, all sorts of things. I'm very excited and I can't wait to meet. So I'm a little bit nervous about that because I'm, yeah, talking to people in person is not my strong suit. Uh, talking to a camera is easy because it's just me talking to a box, <sighs> basically. Talking to another human and having to full-blown interact, yeah. I usually end up saying something weird or not reacting to something when I should react to something. I'm just, I'm socially awkward. It's just a fact, guys. Uh, but yeah, Flock Fiber Festival, really looking forward to it. So yeah, come see me at Flock Fiber Festival. It's gonna be great. Okay, next thing, I've got some art to show you. Which, before I show you my art, I would like to share with you that I have a YouTube channel specifically for my art. Now. Was I planning on doing that? No, but I've done some reading about YouTube algorithms and what it likes, what it doesn't like. It doesn't like when you have two different types of content media, two completely different styles in one, because when you have say subscribers that are into just knitting and then you share a painting video and those knitters aren't into the painting video so they don't watch it. So then it kind of drops you down in the algorithm, that painting video. But then the next knitting video you publish, uh, well, because your last video did so poorly, they, you get knocked down in the algorithm. So I've divvied it up. I now have a new channel for just my art. So if you're into art painting like videos, I would love it if you'd hop on over there and subscribe. That's amazing. I will have a link down in my bio as well as in my like, YouTube channel thing. There's like home and videos. And then there's a little tab that says channels. If you click on that, I have that channel featured there. So you can go check it out there as well. But as always, I'm going to share with you what I've recently painted because, you know, since we're talking about that YouTube channel, I will show two paintings that I actually have painting videos for on that channel. So the first one is this strawberry painting. The next one is this papaya painting, which I love. Look at, look at it. It's so good. I love this papaya painting. It makes me really happy. I kind of want a big one to like, I don't know, put up somewhere because I really like it. I don't know if I showed these or not, but let me show them anyways. I have a little forest, which I'm not a huge fan of. I don't like the way it turned out. Uh, the color mixing down here is not my best. And then a little mushroom. Isn't he cute? 
We have a little bird. We'll have a little tractor, which I really like this like above view. Never done a painting like that. And I really had a lot of fun with it and kind of want to do more. Got this cute little Scottish landscape and house which there will be a video coming on my YouTube channel for that, as well as the next painting we're about to show you. French toast, yes, I have painted French toast. How fun is that? I never really painted food much before, and then I did the fruit study ones, and then I decided to do this one, and now I'm obsessed. I want to do all the food study paintings. Okay, the next one is me experimenting with a new medium. Yeah, I know. Do I need a new medium? No. Uh, but this is a, um, alcohol markers. My sister has a set of them, so I asked her if she could bring them to the street fair we were just vending at. And so she brought them, and this was like a little shop, like kind of down the street from us. So I drew or painted, colored, I don't know what you would consider alcohol markers. You paint like they have a brush tip. Did I paint this? Did I color this? I don't know, uh, but I did this and it was a lot of fun. So yeah, that's all the things. There was lots and lots of things to show and talk about today. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe to see future videos as well as go check out that new channel. I'm so excited about it. Anyways, I hope you have a fabulous rest of your day and we will see you next time. Bye.